Outdoors with Winston Chester. Van Handel Outdoors, your source for fishing, hunting, and information for folks who enjoy the great outdoors. Now sit back, relax. It's Van Handel Outdoors. Good morning, folks. Welcome to Pan Handle Outdoors. I'm Winston Chester. Glad you're here today. We have a big show lined up, so we'll get all the way started with our weather brought to us by Haney Technical Center at Baldwin Road and Highway 77. Our weather today is going to be a high of 81, low tonight at 63, and water temperature is level off, and it's been around 75 now for about three weeks, so that's pretty steady right there. River readings, take a look at the Apalachicola. At Bluntstown, we're looking at a 2.6. The river has gotten low. I mean, look at how much it's fallen in about a week's time. That's a big river there. Take a look at the Choctahatchee at Caraville. It's also down to two foot. I mean, it's been dry really the last couple of weeks. We, we need some rain all over. So uh, we're going to hopefully, hopefully we'll get some rain pretty soon. Uh, sometime this week, they're calling on some rain. I know we've had some cool mornings and uh, some fronts been coming through and we've just been missing it. So hopefully we'll get some. Let's take a look at our tide chart brought to us by Carl Vernon looking today Tuesday April the 17th folks we don't have a tide I mean we've got these are our neat tides we talk about today and, and, and tomorrow and it starts picking up though looking on the weekend if you plan on going out this weekend uh, got some strong tides coming in on Friday and Saturday and Sunday but and next week could be full of good tides but today we're just not going to have a tide you might as well uh, let's go diving or something like that that'd be a lot of fun speaking of diving that's going to be our guest today so uh Let's take our first break and we'll be right back. Your vision is precious. If an emergency arises, you don't want to be sitting in a hospital waiting room. Accidents and injuries can happen outside of your workday. That's why our team of physicians provide emergency eye care to our patients anytime, day or night. You can count on your local experts in eye care to be there for you whenever you need us. The Eye Center of North Florida. Come join the Panhandle Outdoors team. Beat the rush and stock up on our team shirts and hats in a wide variety of colors and sizes. For your convenience, we offer a Panhandle Outdoors shop at panhandleoutdoors.net. Simply visit our website and click shop. You can also check out our selection at Sun Jammers Water Sports on Panama City Beach. Come join the Panhandle Outdoors team. Bill Kramer's Chevrolet Cadillac Buick GMC is Panama City's exclusive full-line dealership. Built on a 45-year foundation of trust and total customer satisfaction in all departments. Including our huge pre-owned department, where we'll pay top dollar for your current automobile as a trade-in. Or we'll place your vehicle on our lot and help you sell it. At Bill Kramer's Chevrolet Cadillac Buick GMC. Four decades, three generations, one tradition. We are so lucky to live in North Florida. We have some of the best fresh and saltwater fishing in the world. My biggest problem is not catching fish, but trying to decide what kind of fish I want to catch. No matter what I'm after, I always stop at Sun Jammers Water Sports first. They have just what I need, rods and reels, line, tackle, and most important, fly bait. Yes, sir, we sure are lucky. And welcome back, and welcome our special guest, Bob Stapleton. Good morning. Clay Galbraith. Good morning. Divers in. These guys are these guys are with us so much. We uh we just uh well, we missed last month because we've been moving everything. Right, tell us, right. Tell us what you guys been up to. Oh, we've been enjoying the water. It's getting pretty out there. I see on Facebook, old Clay. He's always putting stuff on there. Wish you would have been here and showing big old fish and everything. <laughs> I so wish I'd have been there too. Yeah, he's got to have you to learn how to dive so you can go with us. We're gonna talk about that. <laughs> so tell us. Tell well, us. We're gonna have to do something about that. <laughs> just talk about it's it. It's all talk. Huh? Yeah, all right. Yeah. Well, I know the water temperature warm, but last time we talked about it, water temperature is about 63 degrees. It's, it's getting much better now. Yeah. yeah. It's uh, 70, about 70 degrees, 68, 70. Mm -hmm. The temperatures you get from the pier are just the surface temperature. They yeah. get a lot warmer, right. but uh, it's nice now. Three mil wetsuits, more than enough. Uh, a lot of the tough guys are wearing just a, a uh, what we call a dive skin on the top or a rash guard and shorts. So mm -hmm. I, I like to stay warmer than that, but uh -huh. it's okay so for some. How's the water clarity been? It's been good, not not pure, but good. Clay looks, looks at it from the surface. <laughs> yeah, well, um, 
the bridge span 14 last week, you could see from the surface. You could look off the boat and see the, the span. How deep is that now? It's about 45 foot at the top wow. of it. So yeah. Man, you can see all the way down to it? Yeah, yeah. Wow. And uh, sometimes, some days it's like 60 foot of is. That's very good for around yeah. here. So uh, 30, 30 is normal. One of the questions I've been dying to ask you all, because I get a lot of feedback on a daily basis from all kind of fishermen and all the different, but it, my cobia crazy buddies, they're saying they've had a bad year, you know, fishing for cobia. And down on the water, uh, how's it looked on the water for cobia this year? Have y'all seen as many as we usually do? Or? Well, um, we've taken one on the boat so far. So okay. Bob shot a 66 pound one off the boat. And it was at a spot where uh, one of the divers, a dive master, had seen a school of them the day before. And he said there were seven of them laying on the bottom. Okay. And we went to that same spot. And I didn't expect the same seven to be there, but there was one that came cruising by. He was riding on the back of a big stingray, and I shot him. So. Okay. All right. Uh, I noticed you brought a toy. Uh, yeah. This is something that the shop got in recently. It's a. Uh, I'll hold it right here. I'll hold it right there. It's a small video camera. And I tried it out the other day. Maybe we'll look at some video a little later on. It's uh, called a Contour. There's several different models of it. It's, uh, as you can see, it's very compact. It shoots in 1080i uh, resolution. Okay. To turn it on, it has one button. I, I can figure this out. Slide it the button forward, it's on. Slide it back, it's off. It fits in a case Water for underwater, a underwater case that it's done. So even that small, I can carry it in my pocket easily enough. Same deal, uh, on, off. And you can uh, check, you can mount it in any direction you want to, and it shoots, uh, uh, has a laser beam so you can level it. So it doesn't matter what direction you you mount it up, it has uh, an attachment on the bottom, and Clay has a lot of different mounts at the shop. Okay. But uh, neat little device. There's several different uh, brands of underwater cameras, or uh, GoPro is one, but this one is very competitive with that. I'd say the resolution, the ease of use, it's I like it better. Okay. So, uh, and the expense, not too bad. How, <coughs> how deep can you go with that? Uh, I said, well, deeper than I want to dive. Deeper than you want to, okay. <laughs> yeah, no problem with that. It'll go to 180 feet. Wow. Yeah. Wow. You know, a lot of people, uh, a lot of people are recreational, you know, like scalloping and all, and that that would be ideal for a family shooting underwater pictures. And well, all. you know, with this attachment on it, since you can put it, the lens, so it's right side up, I could see how you could put it on a pole. I mean, on some of these fishing shows, you know, you, they show them putting uh -huh. a pole down on the water when the fish are coming out. I mean, you could do that, and, and it has good audio. I mean, you don't have to use it underwater. It's not, it, it's a great mm -hmm. uh, camera for, uh, above water too, and it's wide angle. It's like 170 degrees. So on, okay. uh, that's a problem sometimes. I know you know from video and on yeah. the boat. I mean, if it's just narrow, all you can get is the fish or something. Yeah. It's wide angle, and you can see the whole deck of the boat with it. You don't so, get a whole picture. Unless but this will. I mean, it's yeah. wide enough angle. Yeah. And it's also um, waterproof to six feet out of its case. Oh really? So you can use it out of its case, and its splash won't hurt it. It's, it's mm -hmm. six feet deep out of the out of the enclosure. And you got different kind of mounts for it. Um, yes, whatever. head mounts, you got all kind of mounts mounted on your uh, yeah. your bicycles or your um, surfboards, yeah. however you want to mount it, they have a mount to do it with. Well, I don't know about my surfboard, but I can uh, <laughs> put it up. Uh, that's really neat. A lot of people get into underwater uh, moving photography mm -hmm. now. You see right. a, lot of yeah. it, uh, a lot of technology is caught up with it, and, and it's, it's really really fascinating. So people, people like that. Uh, we're going to get ready to take our first break. We've got a good video I think you're going to enjoy. So we'll be right back. Panama City Beach is known as one of the top dive destinations in Florida. Divers Den offers daily dive charters that can accommodate up to 13 divers. Our boat captain is U.S. Coast Guard certified and a paddy dive instructor. We have trained professionals who offer a variety of scuba certifications. Come see us at our two locations on Thomas Drive and Tendall Parkway. 
When you're looking for sales, parts, and service for your offboard, all in one location, you're looking for BJ's Marine. You're authorized to Hatsu and Nissan dealer. BJ's Marine does it all. They have outboard parts and a service center and used motor sales too. To Hatsu, reliable, dependable, fuel efficient, and lightweight. To Hatsu Outboards, technology for the next generation. BJ's Marine, 1317 Transmitter Road since 1991. Harold Milling Company, rough and tough dog food. Harold Milling Company builds it. They build hog feed. They build dairy feed. They make chicken feed. They have specialty feed for rabbits. If you got a worm farm, grandmother used to have a worm farm. Look at the Harold Milling Company. You want to go down and get your, <clears throat> the dog's not running anymore. It's all over with. You want to get that 16% uh, and drop down from the 26% protein. You don't want old Rover to get fat. Harold Milling Company, you can buy it almost any feed store in the Panama City area. When you stop by Blue Water Outriggers, you will find everything for your outdoor adventure. Stock up on all your favorite brands and shop for some of the latest outdoor gear and accessories. You can also shop online and have your orders delivered straight to your home. Our flagship store is nestled right off the of Highway 98 in the Port City Shopping Center, just steps away from the Port St. John Marina. You will love our selection, our prices, and our friendly service. Welcome back. Sitting here with Bob and Clay. We're getting ready to show you a video. First, I want to say a good morning to uh, Heather and congratulations on winning that, that skillet toss up there at the Vernon Heritage Day. We got first place in there. I went and got second, but Heather, congratulations. Appreciate you watching the show every morning. Got a good picture I want to show you. Check this out. This is a nice picture brought to us by Daniel Richard up in the Funiac Springs. And I love this email. Hey, Coach, had a, had a good day fishing around the Destin Pass. One bonita and 23 Spanish mackerel caught them using what I learned from watching your show. Daniel Richard up in the Funiac Springs. Oh, we appreciate that, Dan Daniel, and uh, more good fishing. I appreciate you watching the show, and it makes you feel good when they learn something off your show. You, you've been a teacher, and when you, when you teach them something, they tell you. Yeah, when they come back and have something to say about it, yeah. that's great. Yeah, that's, that's great. Okay, we're getting ready to. Now these guys, they do some serious diving and, and uh, you know, they learn the, the camera work pretty well. And I was looking at this video. This is a really good video. So we're going to experiment. We're going to try to run it here and, and, and talk over it. Now, I say experiment. We've done it before. So tell us about the background to it. Well, this is um, a video I took on one of the common dive sites. There are about 17 different bridge spans. Uh, there's steel superstructure that they hauled out on uh, barges, dropped them on the bottom out of there. Excellent fishing sites. I think a lot of people that fish them uh, don't realize what they're fishing on. They don't realize they lose their tackle. This will yeah. be, make it pretty obvious why you don't uh, bring your tackle back up. If you hook a big fish, you need to be fishing away from it a little bit. Uh, just a quick aside, the fish usually move up current of these structures, so if you get on the up current side of them, you'll have a lot better luck than fishing straight down through Great it. tip right there. That's so important right. on this bottom right. structure. But I think it'll be pretty enlightening to those who hadn't been down below and looked at it as to uh, what it is that you're seeing on your bottom machine when you drive over one of these. Okay, well, we're going to get ready to roll. Okay, we ready over there? Ready Let's now. Go ahead yeah. and, uh, okay. Get the burn. Here we go. This is some video that I took on one of the local bridge spans. There are about 17 different Hathaway bridge trusses that have been carried out and dropped on the bottom of very popular fishing spots. You can see there are a lot of bait there, some spade fish. Uh, there's the top of the structure itself. My dive buddy swimming along there. Um, later on, those are, uh, you'll see some things that have been dropped on the bottom. But uh, this time of year, now that the water's warming up, there's some cigar minnows going by, but the primary bait fish there in the background are the Spanish sardines. Probably on the outside of that bait ball are some amberjack feeding. Moving along here, looking at the top of the bridge span. Just trying out this new camera. This is the first time I've used it. And uh, I'm pretty pleased with the results. It's very true to what I, you actually see. There's a beeliner moving across in front of us. Spanish mackerel. There was some nice size uh, Spanish mackerel there. I shot a couple of them that were feeding on those Spanish sardines. You'll see them on my stringer a little later on. I 
I was holding my gun out straight ahead like that, hoping the spade fish would come down and rub on it so we could get some video of that. A lot of times they will. There's my dive buddy. About to take a nap, I think. His buoyancy control is about as good as you can do. Very experienced divers can just hang there relaxed without moving. It's kind of comical to see new divers but using their hands, but just taking a look around. You don't have to be swimming hard all the time to enjoy yourself. I think people think scuba diving's more of an exertion than what it has to be. It's a little more strenuous when you're on the surface than it is when you're down below. Here's a little bit of close-up work looking at the bridge span itself up through the top. There's a fat fish. I think she's going to produce a new generation of the grunts for us. And my dive buddy doing a little videography as he's crossing, using a little bit bigger camera than the one we were using. You can see that it's covered, covered with life. Most of it's animal life, even though it doesn't look like much of an animal. There's clams, tunicates, sponges, gorgonians, some algae. There are a couple little blennies. I looked like one found him a snack while he was there, while I was watching. You can see our presence doesn't disturb the fish very much, except there's a some hydroids. That looks like flowers, but it's not. It's an animal. In a minute, we'll come along a, up on a damsel fish here. He, he's disturbed by our presence. He would rather I go away. You can see that particulate in the water. It's probably uh, free-floating algae, some bacteria. I think some people call that marine snow. If it gets real dense, it can interfere with visibility, but visibility on this day was good, probably 30, 40 feet, as you can tell. I'm 40 feet down, and when you pan up, you can see the surface easily. There's a big sponge. Going down to the bottom now, down at about 70 feet, here's some feather duster worms. Uh, they've got their feet in the air, feeding on any plankton that might be floating by. That's a good gravelly bottom where you would find flounder, uh, shell. But as I move in on these worms, there you can see what their defense mechanism is. It's pretty effective. They just disappear. There's a little drum in the background. <coughs> Blue Angel. Somebody dropped a bathtub out there. A lot of people have their picture made in that bathtub. Plenty of grunts swimming around. As I pan down, there's a red snapper. It doesn't look red down there because all the red lights filtered out by the time you're down 30 or 40 feet. That's a problem you spear fishermen have is identifying fish a lot of times, just knowing what they are. Some fish I already got on my stringer, barracuda, a couple of Spanish mackerel. There's a black snapper moving across. You can tell there's plenty of bait now. Here I am moving in on a fish, if we uh, can get the shot on this. You can see how exciting it gets. I'm holding my camera in my left hand and my spear gun in the right hand, and... So, that's how you do it. It got kind of sporty. The barracuda, when you shoot him, normally go for the surface. He's trying to tow me up to the surface, and you can't do that as a diver. You have to go up only slowly. So there, I've got him back under control. There was a break in the clip there that you couldn't detect, but uh, 
He's not out of gas yet, but I'll bring him in and put him on the stringer. This is a boat we were on that day. This is just uh, maybe last Thursday, Friday. Kind of cluttered up with dive gear. And a look in the cooler. Great day of diving. All right, that, that's good. All right, we're going to wrap that one up, and we're going to take this break, and we'll be right back. On the water or under the water, success starts at C&G Sporting Goods. C&G specializes in fresh and saltwater fishing tackle, floundering supplies, spear fishing equipment, and much, much more. C&G also has licenses, maps, and expert advice on where to go. For over 59 years, C&G Sporting Goods has been the headquarters for the outdoors man. Fishing, hunting, camping, guns, and ammo. They've got it all. C&G, home of the experts, downtown Panama City. What's more important in a side-by-side -side RTV? Is it speed and agility, or is it versatility and dependability? When getting out of the woods is more important than getting into the woods, there is only one name to remember, Kubota. With true commercial-grade construction in the chassis and drivetrain, Kubota gives you the dependability, power, and torque you need to get the job done. Kubota builds work tools, not play toys. My name's Captain Rick Corley. I'm a SAMS accredited Marine Surveyor, NAM certified Marine Surveyor, and I am a certified Marine Investigator. Been surveying since 1969. Was taught by my father, who is the oldest longest practice Marine Surveyor in the world. We do all types of survey, commercial or pleasure, steel, aluminum, fiberglass, wood, makes no difference. Give us a call at 850-527. 5287 or visit us online. We'd appreciate your business. Are you still waiting to do something with your IRA, 401k, annuities, or other investments? My dad has an economics degree from Vanderbilt University and he helped promote for her work. A lot of people call themselves financial planners, but my dad passed a board exam to be a certified financial planner. He's fair, easy to talk to, and he spends a lot of time with me. My existing clients, thank you for your friendship and loyalty through these uncertain times. And to everyone else, don't wait until it's too late. Call me today and let's see if I can help. Okay, welcome back. Hope you enjoyed that video. I'm sitting here with uh, Bob Stapleton and Clay Falbert from Divers Den. Couldn't get Stacy to join us this morning, could you? Couldn't get her up. Okay, well, <laughs> we'll get her one morning and come up here and, and have all this fun with us. <laughs> okay, the first, I always like to take a, on this section, take a look at Express Lane Fish and Game Forecast. Our time for the day, uh, it'd be better if we post it up. Our time for the day would be 10.04 to 12.04, brought to us by Express Lane. Looking at tonight, now you're going to do a night diving, looking at 10.25 to 12.25. But right here in the middle of the day, folks, that'd be a good time to get out. Weather looks good today. You can get on out a little bit right before lunch. Tell the boss you want a little bit extra time for lunch and uh, run out, out there and wet a hook for two hours. <laughs> okay, now let's tell, everybody knows about Divers Den. It's been a long time, great reputation, been a family owned for a long time. But tell us the, the location, uh, Clay, of your thoughts. Well, you got that story on, on Tyndall Parkway, which is right before you go on the Tyndall Bridge on the right. Um, and then we have the store on Thomas Drive, okay. um, right there by J. Michaels. Right there before you get to Captain Anderson's. Well, yes, right before you get to Captain Anderson's. You're on the right down there. Been in there. You got all kinds of stuff in there. Mask, them, you and quality you, We should have most anything you need to go diving with. Spear guns, um, cameras, yeah. and we have uh, different types of cameras. We have that hands-free camera, but we also have um, radar cameras too. I always get fascinated by, you know, of all things, I get fascinated looking at, at the fins. Yeah. <laughs> because I was that little rubber ducky ones we had as kids. Yeah. You know, then as they evolved over the years and with the angles and the holes in them, it's really fascinating. They have to come up with something new all the time to yeah. sell us on it. Yeah. yeah. And, I, you know, I, I, as most people know, I do a lot of scalloping. And I get those jet propelled ones. I'm, just, I'm, I'm moving along. There you so go. I, I like them. So uh, got a good place there. Now, I, I know... Uh, Every year we get people talking about diving lessons and all, so if they, if they want to take some diving lessons, tell us how, how we can do that. It, <clears throat> diving lessons are very simple. Most, is, most of them are done in three days now. We do it on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. It's, it's all day Friday, and then most of Saturday and about half a day on Sunday. Um, and it's 
about half a day in the classroom, the rest of it you're actually diving. It's, it's really pretty simple now. You just call us up, we'll give you your books, you do your books, and then show up in class and dive about the end of the first day. And you do it at different times of the spring and summer, or you have different... Yeah, well, pretty much schedules. when the summer gets here, you'll be doing a, a class every weekend. We do one every weekend, wow. and, and most time one during the week. Okay, that, that, that's a good deal. Well, I, uh, Bob, if you had to, you know, look at all the diving y'all have done over the years and all, what would be the highlights of some of your dive? What are, what are some of the spectacular things you've seen? I, I tell you, as long as I've been doing this, every dive I make, I see something interesting and new. I mean, there's never a boring dive. I mean, it, yeah. sometimes it's exciting, sometimes it's just interesting. But uh, right now, something that most people like to see, it's getting to be old hat for us that dive here a lot, but within the past few years, the Goliath Grouper have moved in on many of the inshore sites. And to go down and see even one of them, but sometimes as many as three or four of them on one particular site, that's to swim up to a big 200 to 400 pound fish and mm. take a look at it. And it gets exciting too if you're spear fishing and shoot a fish and they decide that looks like a good crippled fish I'd like to eat. Then you uh -huh. then you have a little contention with them trying to see who can get <laughs> to it first. So well, those Goliath group are making a good comeback, aren't they? They are. They are. Yeah. Mm -hmm. that's really yeah. good. Yeah. Clay, I guess you always, uh, a lot of times you stuck up above board or hold, holding a boat in place, right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's not as much fun to be on the boat as it is under the boat. <laughs> uh, do y'all swap off? Or we swap it? off. We swap off sometimes, okay. yeah. yeah. Okay. We have to have a captain on the boat at all times, so if we go out together, he can take a dive or I can while the other's on the boat, so. I know, uh, down, down uh, a little bit south of us at Mexico Beach Artificial Reef Association, they've done a good job with all those reefs and all doing right. them. Right, yeah. Y'all mm -hmm. dive with all those reefs or? Um, I haven't know very many of them, but they are, a lot of them over there, they hold a lot of fish. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's a great place to dive, but it's a little far for us from to leave from the pass here. We hit places that are closer. Okay. Uh, we got plenty of artificial reefs here to hit. Yeah. And when we pull up on those reefs, there are about three of them on the, if you turn left going out the pass and three spots turning right going out the pass, the dive boats always hit. I mean, they're going to be on the Black Bart, the Hovercraft, and Span 14 on one side, the Red Sea, the Strength, and Span 12 on the other side. I mean, that's, that's just where the dive boats are going. I mean, we get along with the fishermen. Yeah. Uh, fishing and diving can happen at the same time just fine. As you can see from looking at those red snapper moving around, some people think, oh, if a diver goes down, I won't be able to get anything wrong. They don't, we really don't disturb the fish that much. They're pretty oblivious to us. And you, if you give a fisherman one, one tip from being down under and watching people fish and all, uh, what would that tip be? It's always the same. If I want to go find the fish, I head up current outside the bait ball, on the outside edge of the bait ball. If you're fishing right in the middle of the bait ball, the fish aren't feeding in the middle of the bait ball. They're picking on the fish that are on the outside. So move up current, if you can determine which way the current is. Usually it's upwind, but yeah. not always. Yeah. And outside the bait ball. You might not even be seeing the structure on the bottom machine. Probably better if you're not. And uh, you'll do a lot better. All right, guys, that sounds good. I appreciate you coming on. Enjoyed it. Yo, thanks, Winston. We'll be getting together pretty soon on, on our diving. Yeah. All right, folks, we want to thank you all for watching the show. Really appreciate your viewership. And I want to encourage you today to do something good for somebody. And God bless. Thanks for joining us for Panhandle Outdoors with Winston Chester. Panhandle Outdoors features hunting, fishing, and other activities and information to help you enjoy the great outdoors. Join us next time for Panhandle Outdoors.